So I'm curious, nearby niche, if my coffee machine will pick up on the microphone, because it's the loudest coffee machine in the world. It is. That's the stuff. So you can't even see it. You can't see That's it. Really cool. It's hidden and so well. And now people are watching this at home going, wait, was there always a coffee machine there? Yes. You won't believe the amount of shit we've got back here, folks. We've got, I've got my coffee pods, my coffee. I've got candles, if we want to get romantic. I've got my headphones, so when we record remotely. You see uh, a little pumpkin. Got a little, yeah, I've got a little pumpkin for Halloween decorations. That's still there. We've got memory cards for when we're recording. Um, got a bunch of those, oh, of course. Got a bonely. Got a bonely. <laughs> got a skeleton. Every office needs, oh yeah, I'll put a skeleton on the desk. Every time I put this skeleton in a video, like magic happens. Or it falls over. Yeah. It's the smallest machine, but it's so loud. Yes. <laughs> you have to fill it twice. I want a double espresso. <laughs> the Peregrine Falcon is a green. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> so, so, my, oh no, oh no! Ouch. Just, just get a sec. For, the peregrine falcon is a creature best known for being literally one of the fastest singular animals on planet Earth. Shall, shall I redo that or should we just leave the constant droning of the coffee machine just going, uh Is that my impression of a microwave? Just, if you ever want to do an impression of a microwave, folks at home, you've got to whistle and hum at the same time. So it's, Try and hum and whistle uh, at the same time. I can't just... whistle very well. <laughs> Try it. So what your microwave sounds like. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. Hey, it's one of my many. Oh no! Capable of reaching speeds approaching half the speed of sound, the tiny bird's unerring ability to obliterate a falcon-sized target with unerring accuracy has seen it unironically compared to a guided missile. Pretty fast then, yeah. Pretty fast, yes. So uh, if anyone's curious, um, uh, Oh, no, a bit of drip on the coffee there. Uh, the Peregrine Falcon's top speed has been clocked in at around 200 miles an hour, uh, with some exceptional examples of the bird approaching speeds much higher than that. As mentioned, half the speed of sound, uh, or approaching it, is um, not out of the realm of possibility for a Peregrine Falcon in flight. That is super speedy. It's the fastest bird on Earth and one of the fastest creatures. And there's always like, uh, like a little asterisk you have to put next to the thing of like fastest creature, so it's the fastest bird because there are other creatures that technically move slightly faster or relatively faster. For example, something like a flea, um, relative to its size, is moving the equivalent of several hundred miles an hour when it like jumps. Yeah, yeah, they jump so fast. Because if you like look at how many of its own body lengths it traverses in like you know a split second, if it was like scaled up to be human size, it'd be travelling like an astonishing rate of speed that would obliterate anything it hits. Now I'm just like imagining a giant flea. A giant <laughs> flea. Well, <sighs> well, that gives me an opportunity to mention one of my favourite things I watched as a kid that I've never seen like redone or like on DVD anywhere and it is the Animal Olympics. For one year for the Olympics the BBC did the Animal Olympics for kids mm -hmm. and what they did is they basically took representatives from the animal kingdom to compete in a series of Olympic events and they scaled the animals up and in some cases down. And the insects near universally just uh, annihilated every member of the animal kingdom because they all got scaled up. Yeah. It's like, oh, we've got the high jump, and here's the flea. Yeah. And they put the high <laughs> jump like four miles into the sky. Just giant insects would be terrifying. It's like well, I was going around a museum a couple of weeks ago, and it's like, oh, yeah, here's the section where we have like the arthropods from um, prehistory. Mm -hmm. And it's like, here's just, you know, a centipede that's like eight foot long. And you're like, well, foot less. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? I'd just die. <laughs> I'm scared enough of spiders. Never mind fucking scent. Ugh, it's just all the legs and the. There's too many legs, yeah. It's just, it's just not nice. I mean, I don't, I don't think I mind the massive tarantulas as much as the little, little spiders. Yeah. There's something about them being really fast and moving quickly and jumping on you and stuff. That, that is exactly freaks me my out. Thought, bro, yeah. Tarantulas, I don't like them. If there was one in the room, I'd be very wary of it. But something about the fact they're like. <laughs> slow moving yeah. but then when you see like huntsmen's and like those orb weavers and they've got the really long spin leg i don't like that so it's moved quickly away from the quick moving insects and go back to the quick moving birds and the peregrine falcon the fastest land animal on earth like by average 
There's probably something there's probably someone in the comments saying, well, technically this animal moves faster, or like, you know, there'll be a snake out there that moves relatively quicker while it's striking or something, which is why there's always an asterisk next to the title of fastest animal. Fastest bird when in flight. Yeah. Because I'm sure there's birds that travel faster when they get sucked into jet engines and stuff, but they're one off. <laughs> I don't think that counts. <laughs> But bringing it back to the falcon, it moves so quickly that experts who study them genuinely have a hard time doing so because they're so quick, it's almost impossible to like capture it, like footage of them in flight. Because like, you know, you're filming a bird, you're filming a bird. So everyone's wondering, like, do they they don't just fly 200 miles an hour all the time? It's when they go into a dive bomb. Oh, okay, they yeah. fly pretty quick for a bird, but like when they specifically dive for their prey, and, like, and they use that to like, you know, attack them. We'll talk about why they have to specifically move so fast in a moment. But yeah, it's now flying on, flying on, boom, 200 miles an hour. The attack begins slowly, then gradually picks up speed. Its wings tucked in. The Falcon is approaching 200 miles per hour. Uh, you need like those people who film golf to get those birds. And that's one of those things that I'm, they need to like do a documentary about how the pe people who film golf get trained. Cause like, you know, it's a ball that big. And it's like, yeah, here it is. Bang, it goes like 100 mile an hour into it. And the guy's like, how? Oh, keeping things in focus as well, that's, that's a hard task. It is a skill and it's very difficult to like, you know, keep things in focus and in the center of frame while they're moving very quickly, which is why experts have had to resort to using 3D models of peregrine falcons in flight rather than actually filming them. Really? Because like actually getting fo usable footage and um, uh, data of them in flight is so difficult. It's like, fuck it, just 3D model one of these things and put it into a computer. Well, they're not used, I'm assuming they have tried slow-mo cameras, right? Oh, I, you know, they can do it, but like, you know. It's just not great. Yeah, and it's not feasible to do all of the time. So those cameras are very prohibitively expensive. Yes. So they just get the birds, 3D model them, and then just put the 3D models into simulations and use that to get their data. But one thing that's actually kind of surprising about the Falcons, you might think that flying at 200 miles an hour straight down, the birds will find it quite difficult to maneuver, right? Yeah. Because they, they're going in a straight line at several hundred miles an hour, like the wind streaming into the face while trying to attack something. And it's like, no, according to experts who study these things, they actually find it easier to move while dive bombing than they do while they're in the air. And their maneuverability is actually higher when they're at 200 miles an hour than it is when they're just flying normally. How? I don't know. How? <laughs> like, these things can move better when they're dive bombing than they can when they're flying. I don't understand how, that, how that's possible. Well, just, and how scary it would be if you were dive bombed by one. That's the thing, like just thousands of years of evolution have gone into creating this tiny feathered meat bullet that just flies at all the birds. And that's how they kill all the birds. It's just, they snap their neck on impact when they like crash into them. And it's similar in a way to the way that sharks hunt, where they you know, breach the water while grabbing their prey. Just so like the sheer shock and force of it all doing like just breaks the uh, thing's neck instantly. Yeah. Just, but just imagine that, but it's like a bird and it's like the little claw bird. Yeah, you're a goner. Imagine if it just crashed into you. Yeah, you're a goner. <laughs> like, do you know, like, like when a bird hits a window when you're in school and it's like really sad? Now imagine it was a peregrine falcon. It'll crash right through. <laughs> it's just through the other side. <laughs> we imagine it's wearing those little falcon helmets that they put on so the falcons can't see. And you just, <laughs> it would literally crash through one window and out the other. <laughs> Just through your head teacher. Scary and insane and pretty cool to be fair. Yeah, and it's um, believed that the forces the bird is subjected to, because the forces are so great, it allows it to make tighter turns. And that's where you get the image that no doubt people have got in their head now, which is the peregrine falcon next to a stealth bomber. And we have just like this image here, I'll open it up, of just a peregrine falcon in flight while it's diving. Oh yeah, yeah. wow yeah. And it's one of those things where it's, um, nature inspiring humanity. And that's one of the things I kind of like about nature, where it's had thousands, millions of years to perfect these designs. Like that bird is like one of the most aerodynamic things to exist. Yeah. Um, so when experts are making things like stealth bombers or missiles, they're just like, oh, just base it on that bird. And that greatly intrigued and drew the interest of military researchers who have likened the movements of the peregrine falcon in flight while it's hunting to that of a guided missile. So much so that guided missile research has been informed by research on these falcons. I'm not making this up. Like the research in the way these falcons work of like, yeah, like the way they move is unerringly similar to the way guided missiles move, which for anyone curious is a dramatic readjustment at the last possible second. Mm -hmm. And they have studied the way these birds move and when they're in flight, you know, their tail feathers, if you see from that image there, just like the perfectly aerodynamic shape to uh, redesign guided missiles. So yeah, folks at home, there is 
Most likely a guy in a darkened room and a suit and a pair of glasses out there somewhere in a government bunker trying to figure out how to make missiles more effective just looking at a picture of a bird. And in my head it's just a picture of a bird and a picture of a missile and then just like a big like like question mark in the middle and he's like, hmm. <laughs> and he's just trying to figure out how. It will click one day. One day we'll figure this out. So yeah, Peregrine Falcons might one day be used to improve guidance missile systems. So Peregrine Falcons could be like inadvertently partially responsible for the end of the planet. Well, we did a video many, many years ago now at this point where we talked about how birds would take over the Earth. And I think I mentioned the Peregrine Falcon as being like one of the, the ground units they on the ground. <laughs> Air units, of course. So I think the joke I make is, is that well, obviously no Air Force on Earth can compete with the Air Force of the birds. And I mentioned like how demoralizing it would be for like the President of the United States to be like, look, no pro these birds, not a threat. We can sort these birds out. And imagine a peregrine falcon just dive bombs through the back of his head on national TV. And then an eagle lands on his head and spreads its wings like what? Birds in charge, baby, birds in charge. Definitely a parrot as well. They would like send out orders, commands. And they can ship people up, yeah. And then you'd have chickens just like throwing themselves like um, uh, off cliffs to like, disrupt the food supply. And I know because someone's gonna mention this, I should mention the idea of chicken guided missiles because someone in the comments also gonna send us an email about this. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was an idea during World War II because birds have an exceptionally keen sense of sight in a very specific way in which they are very um, able to pick up colour on a screen. And there was a proposed idea that never went anywhere to put chickens inside of missiles to use them as a rudimentary guidance system um, where the chicken pecking on a screen at the target. Oh no. So all those like um, theoretical ideas to like design like robot bees to pollinate plants. It's like, we're spending all this money for something that nature does for free because we can't stop dumping shit in the environment. Speaking of dumping shit in the environment, I'm going to talk about... Wait, what? <laughs> I was going to say, like, I'm wearing one of our, our oh. t-shirts today. So if you want to get some useless shit... <laughs> Buy our merch. Buy our merch. Well, I don't know if we've got that thing yet, but we try to like create a new end card, aren't we? For the videos oh. to advertise all like the new thing, the new ventures we've got, such as the merch store and the, uh, the Patreon. Mm -hmm. And the idea we've got at the moment is just me going buy our shit, just me pointing towards our merch store. There is, I, we do have a picture already of you like doing that sort of pose when we- when I just we thought you the meant photo. dabbing then. Cause yeah. you, you, you almost dabbed and like- It's kind of like a dab point. <laughs> we do that, yeah, like so you know, dabbing towards the merch, like yeah. There is one that exists already when we did that photo shoot for the website. We came to the office one day to take a bunch of photos for setting up the merch store. Like we see a smattering of them behind us. And it just, that was just such an awkward thing, wasn't it? And it gave me an- so we're not a, models. <laughs> it gave like... me an appreciation. For um, Psycho, who we are, you know, working with um, and who've helped us set up the website, so thank you to Psycho. Check out their stuff as well. Um, and like, you know, the, they get pictures of their models looking fucking fantastic, just like in all their stuff, and like the image is immaculate, and they look so fucking cool. And then you got us, are just like an idea I had many, many years ago um, when a friend of mine um, was setting up uh, like a clothing store or something like that for because they did business, and that was one. Of, uh, apparently, their teacher was Alan Sugar. And I had an idea of, like, oh, we need to do like photo shoots of, so people sat wearing the clothes. And an idea I had was, rather than doing a boring photo shoot of someone who's like, you know, wearing the clothes, why don't you get a photo shoot of them in like some really bizarre random scenario? And then when you like mouse over the t-shirt, it tells you what the t-shirt is. And I like, had the idea of like, you know, like someone falling down the stairs. <laughs> and it's like the, the photo of them falling down the stairs and then you mouse over to their t-shirt and it shows you the t-shirt. Because in my head, that was just, Interesting. Yeah, you'd remember that. Yeah, you would remember that, wouldn't you? I was, I was thinking like, you know, an entire catalogue. I just thought it was a good idea, and I gave that friend that idea, and they never did anything with it. So you know what? Folks in chat, I say, I say chat, folks in the comments, like, <laughs> would you would you like that? Because that's maybe something we could do for the Untitled Side Channel, isn't it? Of just... Just have a laugh with it as well. Come in and like, think of some bizarre stuff. We've got all these props around, like we've got a skelly bob and stuff like that. And it goes into like a, it's not a theory I have, but it's an ethos that I follow, which is you don't advertise with the product, you create something people want to seek out and put the advertising in that. 